Raleigh has one of the earliest sales and service centers outside of California and they had to split it they've got service over here and we're gonna head on over to the sales both are really small for this market and we're just weeks away I heard from them moving into their brand new much larger location that's gonna be not hidden back in these little office complexes <laughs> like this one is. We've had our Tesla Model 3 since late September 2018, and though I think it's not only the coolest car, but the coolest thing of any kind I've ever owned, a sedan doesn't fit all the needs we have for transportation. We have a large dog that we like to take with us, but he's too energetic to just let him unrestrained in the back seat. I like to work on the house myself, and the Model 3's trunk opening just isn't big enough to fit a new power tool or appliance. I even just started camping in my Tesla, and a Model 3 is great for that, but the extra height of the new Model Y will make a a huge difference. After many failed attempts, I finally had the chance to drive the new Tesla Model Y, and I'm just going to come right out with it. It did not wow me at all. In fact, the position of the rear roof crossbeam causes two big concerns, and I simply cannot believe that reviewers aren't even mentioning one of them, but I'll get to those details later. This isn't the review I wanted to do, but it's the review I'm able to do with the very limited time I had with the Y. It was actually a Tesla employee's personal vehicle that he allowed short test drive in and I really appreciate the opportunity that gave me to experience the Model Y for myself. That said, after putting 31,000 miles on our Model 3 in just under two years of ownership, I didn't really need a lot of time to notice a few significant differences. Okay. Well, this turns out to be it's owned by a manager. Oh yeah, the seating position is really nice I like how high it is but it doesn't it doesn't feel foreign to me at all coming from a model 3 the front seats in the Y are exactly the same as those in the 3, but they're on platforms to give you a taller seating position. The dash is likewise raised, so the proportions seem the same looking out the windshield, but you really notice a difference looking out the sides, especially in traffic. The first surprise for me was seeing that the side mirrors were significantly taller than in the Model 3. That will mean I have to move my head around less to check my blind spots, especially when merging with traffic at an angle. Okay, right now I wouldn't, just in a parking lot, of course, I wouldn't know that I'm not in a Model 3. It's the same dimensions, same wheelbase. Well, it's not really the same. The Model Y has nearly an inch longer wheelbase and a two inch wider track, but those clearly weren't significant enough for me to notice behind the wheel. Speaking of the wheel, my Model 3 has the OG leather steering wheel, and this is the first time I've felt the new synthetic steering wheel that is now standard on the 3 as well as the Y. Oh, and the steering wheel lacks the stitching. This is the non-leather steering wheel. Yeah, the seating position, I, uh, I really like the seating position and uh, just the room over my head. Uh, the mirrors are, <laughs> are almost twice as tall, so there's a much bigger view through the side mirrors. Wasn't expecting that. Rear view is almost non-existent. You know, they really, maybe this will come in a future update, but they really need to come up with a way that you can have navigation and a rear view on at the same time. Oh yeah, I, the visibility out of the back, that's, it's like a Lamborghini or something. It's really tight. Other reviewers have mentioned this, but visibility out the rear view mirror is really 
really bad. Yes, you can see vehicles that are directly behind you, but only parts of them, and you can easily miss vehicles starting to overtake you on the right or left. Sure, you can probably see those in your side mirrors, but with the Model 3, I can look in my rear view mirror and check the car behind me, as well as those in adjacent lanes overtaking me all with one quick glance. Not so with the Model Y. Yeah, and my Model 3, I never feel like I, I need to have the rear view camera on. But I definitely feel that way in this. I would be running the rear view camera on a lot more. You know, I, I will say that uh, with the price difference that there is right now between the Model 3 and the Model Y, yeah, even in this short time, there there isn't a lot of difference in what I'm feeling between this and a Model 3. Not enough that I would spend the money for this room over a Model 3. The appeal of the Model Y to me, and I think most buyers, is the, the cargo capacity. Uh, or if you're really, really tall and somehow can't fit in a Model 3, I, I think you'd have to be pretty tall because I know some, some people well over six foot that have Model 3s. But, I, you know, I... I I don't know what my expectations were. I didn't have a lot of expectations, but clearly there's there are so many things that are shared between the Model 3 and the Model Y that these should feel almost the same. But there's no, I don't feel any compelling reason to, to jump out and sell our Model 3 and get a Model Y, even though I would like the cargo capacity. It's a... Uh, I think it really comes down to that. You're gonna be spending money uh, for the cargo capacity. Eventually they're gonna have the seven seat model. Whew. That's gonna be tight back there, but, uh, but for the five seat model, in the driver's seat, I am taller. It, it might be more comfortable for people, but I, I feel perfectly comfortable. I feel this comfortable in my Model 3, no problem. Yeah, so this is a performance model, so the suspension is probably stiffer because of that. I was not a fan of the suspension on this Model Y, but mainly in the rear. I've never felt like the suspension in my non-performance Model 3 was bottoming out or harsh, even over some really bad potholes. But the back end of this Model Y was a bit sharp for daily driving. So he does not have intersection control on. <laughs> Didn't cause any issues, but notice that. Now, you can get a Performance Model Y without the Performance Upgrade package that this one has, and that's probably where the rear-end harshness is coming from. It's currently a no-cost option. It adds 21-inch wheels and a lowered suspension along with better brakes, a higher top speed, and aluminum pedal covers. On face value, that seems like quite a deal, but you really should confirm if that's what you want with the test drive of your own. Yeah, this might be an unpopular opinion, but I actually like our Model 3 better. Uh, it's not apples to apples because again, this is a performance version with with the performance uh, springs And of course there's more weight in the Model Y I definitely like the feel of the Model 3 better and I I really hate the visibility out the back that is This, this is absolutely the the worst rear visibility of any vehicle I've ever driven. 
The visibility is just part of the problem with the hatchback. There simply isn't the room I was hoping for, for comfortably taking our dog with us on our adventures. He'd fit, but only if he was lying down or standing right behind the rear seats. This was not the CUV I was hoping for in that regard. There's not much more to say about the drive itself, and sadly, my driving impressions, both good and bad, were overshadowed by what I discovered sitting in the back seat. You know, I know, I know it's bigger, but it, it doesn't, it doesn't kind of bowl me over with how much bigger it is. And uh, I think the back seat passengers would be more comfortable. I'm gonna hop in the back. Oh yeah, the back seat. Well, with my head on the headrest, I don't like that at all. How, why is, why is no reviewer mentioned this? Like if I'm sitting upright and I get, re we get rear ended, my head is going to hit this, not the headrest. Wow. That is horrible. Yeah, you can adjust it more upright. But with it reclined, and I'm only 5'8". I was wondering about that. Ah, oh, it has lights in the... Because there's no bar going across here, so it has lights on the side of the, the headliners. That makes sense. Uh, I do like the more leg room. The Model Y's glass roof is amazing. Panoramic doesn't do it justice. There's just no question this is a huge benefit of having the rear cross brace so far back. From an exterior design standpoint, it certainly makes sense because it gives a place for all of the hardware and electronics that actuate the power hatch a place to go. And that power hatch and the cargo room it reveals is really why I think anyone should get the Model Y over the Model 3. Oh yeah, lots more storage in the back, of course. Nice and deep. And then there is a second very thin sub trunk for some reason oh and oh that's a nice feature to hold it in a place to hold it up but uh that must be why this is a lot thicker it's a lot heavier material than the trunk covers in the model three Oh. oh, that one's not going down for some reason. And that's nice. That is why you get a Y. And uh, that does fold flatter than the Model 3. But these don't fold equally. That may just be a fit and finish issue with this particular one, but I'm not so sure because it, it must have to do with the middle seat being attached to that oh that's heavy that was heavy and then yeah this sticks out farther there we go well yeah So that was, that was enlightening. Very short period of time. I learned a lot about the Model Y, that's for sure. 
It's a day later and I'm sitting in our Model 3 in the back and it obviously took me some time to process the issue created by the cross beam in the Model Y, especially when it comes to safety. I didn't have a lot of time with the car, so in the video clip that you've just seen, it didn't seem like I made as much of a big deal about it as I am now. And that's just because I needed to get to other things in the vehicle and I knew I was gonna have time after making that video, after getting that footage, to think about what I saw. I simply don't see an advantage to having back seats that recline if reclining them means that you're gonna hit your head on that cross beam. I especially see an issue that can be created with safety because in a rear end collision, you're gonna hit the top of your head on that cross beam. And sure that has a potential for causing a head injury like a concussion, but my concern is about the neck injury that could be created by forcing your neck under an impact into an unnatural position. That's what I really worry about. In independent safety testing, I don't think any car crash tests actually test the rear seat for whiplash protection or anything like that with a seat reclined and a dummy actually in the car as the car gets rear-ended. Any whiplash protection tests that I've seen are with the seats actually outside of the vehicle and put on a sled. I think this is something that should be independently tested. For all the protection that crossbeam is going to give you in a rollover accident or maybe reducing cabin intrusion in a T-bone accident, I see that it potentially is gonna increase the chance of injury in the most common kind of accident that happens on the road every day, and that's a rear end collision. I'm not saying this definitively. I'm just saying that this needs to be tested by some independent group that does this stuff for a living. At a minimum, it can't possibly be comfortable reclining that rear seat if you're anywhere near my five foot, eight inch height or above. That I can say. If you're thinking about getting a Model Y, please verify this for yourself. Get in the back seat, put the seat at the various positions and see if your head hits that cross beam. Add in the fact that the rear seats in the Model Y have two inches less shoulder room than this Model 3. Sure, the seats are mounted higher, so that gives you a more comfortable leg angle when you're sitting down, but I've never had any complaints about leg room in my Model 3, but I have had people talk about how squashed they are when they're sitting three across, and that's only gonna be worse than the Model Y. As a driver, the Model 3 is more fun to drive, and as a rear passenger, the Model 3 is possibly safer and probably more comfortable than the Model Y despite its reclining seats. I think the cargo capacity of the Model Y is gonna be the main appeal. The power hatchback gives incredible access to the rear cargo area, and that's a big improvement over the small opening in the Model 3's trunk. Drivers and front seat passengers who have trouble getting in and out of many sedans will probably like the higher seating positions. And I think that's gonna be a big boon for people who might have mobility issues, whether it's a bad knee or a bad back, or you just don't like bending down to get into your car. The Model Y also has an inch of clearance underneath the vehicle, which can be a big deal for people who have wonky gravel driveways or who have steep driveways that have breakovers that lower cars might have trouble getting over. If you don't really need those things, I think you should consider saving money and getting a Model 3 or spending the same amount of money and getting a higher performance version of the Model 3. At a minimum, you should test drive both before settling on a Y know what you're getting and know what you're losing with each choice. The Model Y is far from the no-brainer I was hoping it was going to be. It is very much a decision that requires you to engage your brain to make a choice based upon your needs and not the needs of a reviewer somewhere, even me. I don't think the Model Y is going to cannibalize Model 3 sales as much as been discussed. The Model 3 is still more fun to drive it's got way better rear visibility and the rear seat passengers are probably going to enjoy the ride a lot more. 
If you're thinking about getting a Tesla for yourself, be sure to use my Tesla owner's referral code. It'll be somewhere right here. It'll get you free supercharging if you do. Full details on the Tesla owner's referral program can be found at the link itself. Be sure to subscribe so you can see more videos discussing the Model 3, the Model Y, and a comparison between the two. I really appreciate you watching the Tech of Tech, and I hope to see you next time.